kial chal sab changa si i hope that you guys are doing good in this after a long wait we are seeing the rabin cup algorithm now it's not like other rabin cup we will see worst case is o of n plus m time so in this you will see single hash and double hash both we will be seeing it usually people just usually tell you with the single hash one the entire thing which you have learned is single hash but then we will see the worst case o of n plus m algorithm of rabin cup now for the folks who don't know rabin cup is nothing but a string matching algorithm for example if we take a simple example although it it is marked as easy but it is not at all easy because it is marked as easy because of the constraints constraints are very less but it has a hard version also which actually requires a very great algorithm which is both raven cup and kmp now for sure for the folks who don't know we have already had the kmp video again it's also a string matching algorithm but with a very small short concise code specifically for your interviews now if still you don't know what the string matching is string matching is nothing but let's say i give you two strings needle and haystack and i ask you can you please help me out and match the strings now he can ask you anything in this question he has asked you return the index of the first occurrence of needle in the haystack needle is a string small string haystack is a big string then return me the first occurrence of this needle in this haystack or if there is no not like not possible then simply return a minus one so it's nothing but i have to search for this needle string in my haystack string that is my main task which means searching for a string in some other string now usually when the string searching kind of algorithm comes in for sure the first first things which is strike your mind is either kmp rabin cock or a try again uh, there are also suffix trees and stuff but yeah we will have our mind click with these three things try rabin cock and kmp and if it's possible brute force then for sure brute force is always there for us but we will see that if we go about in a brute force manner consider again it's just but it's just that we have a pattern and we have to search that pattern in a string so taking the simple example of searching a pattern in our string so if we have afg i have to search this afg i can easily see the first occurrence of afg in my string s is at this location so i have to return the index 0 1 2 3 i return the index 3 if i am going to find it i'll simply return the minus 1 so very brute force technique says that you have this string of size m you have the upper string of size n which is the string s main string you will compare the entire string of length m starting from this index compare the entire string character by character i'll compare a okay matched compare d ah not matched cool no worries now go on now i will go on and compare the entire string of length m again with the entire pattern okay a a match no it's not matching okay no worries now next okay next i'll move on i'll compare the entire string e a f g with a f g you will see oh compare 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 oh oh at e and a it was not matching so i simply moved on okay i moved on here then i was here again compare the pattern a a matched okay f f matched okay g g matched oh entire pattern is matching so you will say okay aryan that's i can simply say i'm trying to compare the pattern but i can easily see okay by by your saying worst case i can see it can go to o of n square but still in this case i have reached the pattern which means i have compared with the pattern and then i can simply return the index of this specific like location but uh, i can see that most of the time you saw after matching one character it just left on here it did not even match so usually i'm thinking maybe it will work in o of n time no because what if your string is a a a a a a something like that and then your string d let's say pattern pattern is a a a d and let's say last here is d now if you compare this with this entire m string is being compared at the last cut we will say oh no bro no bro it is not matching then next entire pattern will match but then okay at last it is not matching again entire pattern will match last not matching again entire pattern will match last oh now it is matching so you saw you saw in the worst case it will, it will be o of m m into n time n for every character here and m is the length in which you will be comparing with the other string so n into m will be the worst case time so we saw that m into m will be the worst case time although for this easy problem it will work it will work but then we have to do it in o of n plus m time now for rescue comes is our kmp again i don't do you can do it via kmp also via try also 
via your wrapping cup also try has some complexities involved in this but the simple basic stream matching i'll recommend first if you have understood the try properly and try as a very small code three lines four lines of code that's it Raven Cup has a very very big code but yeah easy to understand and easy to remember because it's based on how your unordered maps work and what are you saying see our main aim was i was comparing i was go i was going to all the characters but then i was comparing the entire string okay i have to compare the entire string of s with the entire pattern and that was a headache for me comparing two entire strings strings that's a headache for me if i had to compare two integers it's just a compare two integers that's a o of n operation comparing two strings of length m is a o of m operation so i thought of why not convert this string to a number convert this string to a number and then i can compare the number itself so what i thought of okay let's compare the string to a number how to compare simple i know c is the third character okay three d is the fourth character okay four e is the five e is the fifth character okay five then my hash became in 12 now i i can say okay i'll convert my string to a number and then i'll compare that number itself so what i'll do okay a b c simply go into all the characters 1 plus 2 plus 3 add a 6 now compare their hashes 6 and 12 great but rn you will say now you will say rn okay now compare and evaluate the hash of the next one so you will add b which is 2 plus 3 plus 4 and then you will add it still it is o of m you will you are going on to all of them m all the m characters again and then still it's o of m then what's the use of hash for you there is a there is a concept called a sliding window in which you can easily see that earlier your window was this but now your window slided and it became like this so what happened your a went away and your d came in the exact same thing i'll do with my hash also in my existing hash which is six i'll say bro d came in d value was four in the existing hash hash is six d came in and a went away minus a and a's value was one so i can say six plus four minus one will be my new hash so it's nothing but existing hash i had i added plus d i subtracted minus d now i got my new hash value which is nine now i can compare this with my existing hash which i have found of my pattern which is 12 oh it's not matching okay no worries simply go on as i go on i'll come i'll again existing hash which is 9 plus my e minus my b i'll get my new hash value which is 12 oh it's matching with my hash of my pattern bro it's matching matching walla walla it's matching which means i have found my match so now you will say in that's so good that's so easy and thus i can simply say at this character it, it's matching voila i found my answer you are happy right <laughs> not yet because it can have spurious spurious hits now Arun, what is this spurious hits which means like the hits which might give you wrong answer like it's a technical term you, you don't need to go into that but it's just that you can have hits which will give you wrong answer for example you found the hash one plus three plus one hash will be five what if i give you a b b one plus two plus two again hash is five. Oh, hash is the same which means you will infer strings are also same but bro you can easily see a b b is not equal to a c a which means your hashes are not good so now i saw oh even if even if i match a hash then still i have to go and compare the actual strings to know if they're matching or not so again the time complexity which i was thinking might have gone to o of n plus m still it has come to o of n into m because of those spurious spurious hits what can i do for this ah uh, that's a thing for us to think of that what we can do again uh, another example we can see the hash for this is 3 a b but the hash for b also will be same so what we can infer like one thing we can infer is okay the characters were different but maybe i can repeat the character let's say bb was repeated but then a higher character and then a low, lower character so balancing was there okay because of that i was getting a spurious hits what if i had different arrangement a b b a order also matters oh so what i figured out was okay i have 26 characters so that's one thing which will matter because because you saw having a a b b having a a c a which means if i had a c one more character b other character so for me number of characters will matter if i have how many characters i have okay also it matters what character i have 
राइट सी वर्सेस ओके आई हैव लेट्स से टू करेक्टर्स आई हैव लेट्स से टू करेक्टर्स ए बी आई हैव ए सी मैटर्स सो करेक्टर्स आल्सो मैटर्स एंड द लेंथ आल्सो विल मैटर हाउ बिग द लेंथ इज आर एन यू आर सेइंग बिकॉज़ यू नो दैट पार्ट हाउ वुड आई नो इट मैटर्स और नॉट सी इफ आई आस्क यू इफ यू हैड अ स्ट्रिंग यू हैव अ मेक अ यू हैव टू मेक अ यूनिक हैश फॉर इट now one thing i was doing is i was inferring this a and i was saying bro a is there bro a is there then i will say a is hash is 1 b is hash is 2 c is hash is 3 now let's say i have a so i was saying this factor right now i'll go and ask you what you have to do is you have to uniquely say that at this specific index again if i put the indexes from the super end so index 0 index 1 index 2 at the index 2 i have a a i have to figure out that part so i'll say at index 2 at index 2 i have a okay are you but then what is this what is this factor why is this factor required why can't i put any number let's say 1 i can't put a 1 why 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 can't i put a 1 okay are in 1 square might give us same value so why can't i put a 2 that's also okay completely fine right because no no because If I put a two here, for example, let's say if you would have put a two here, what would have happened? If you would have put a two here, then you would have got a two square multiplied by let's say one. Okay, a value is one. Then what if I ask you if I would have some previous value, some previous value? Let's say here is a two, two. Then you would have said hash like this base factor will be two, so here will be two. Multiply by two, so it will also form two square. It will also form two square. You are gone. So why was this required? So I have to put some base value, some base value such that every one, every one, no matter what is multiplied to them, no matter what is multiplied to them, they should not become equal to anyone else. That's on that. That's my prime aim. So. I have to put in again. That's a question mark for me. That's a question mark for me. That's a question mark for me. What to put in as a base? I will put in something. No matter what I multiply here. Again, what I am multiplying here? I am multiplying the characters. I know the characters from R from A to Z, which means the maximum number I can multiply here is a twenty-five, right? I can say na A. I can say zero, and for Z, I can say twenty-five. Maybe earlier I was doing a one, two, three. I can say from zero to 25 also. So I saw maximum I can multiply is 25. So I should put a factor here such that it is more than 25. So I, I can put 100. That's completely fine. I can put a 26, 27. I can put anything. But I want okay. I don't want, because the things are being squaring up. So number can become very large. That that's also pain to me. So I'll put minimum value. Okay, 26. Okay, 26. Okay. Twenty-six, so that nothing will actually hamper each other out. Nothing will hamper each other out. Okay, great. Seems fine. Seems fine. So what will happen is again, uh, usually like you will see later on going forward, a we actually hash to zero, then b to one, and then c and like so on and so forth. So as to become like to make it more consistent. Now, okay, that seems completely fine. That we had make sure that we are taking the character. Which means I'm converting the character. I'm converting and using the location, and to not avoid, like to avoid actually hitting each other. Which means these might hit each other. So as so as to make the specific thing unique, I am having the maximum factor here, which is twenty six. So I need these three things to actually make my hash function to be very unique. So I figure out okay one thing that I will make my hash function like this. That's going to be super unique. But 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 bro. You saw that your n value usually can go to one e five, which means you have you can have one e five number of characters, which means this n index value can also go to one e five roughly. So twenty six raised to the power one e five. That's going to be a very 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 large number which you cannot store in your integers or even long longs, not even in any possible way. So. Whenever you cannot store something which is very large, you have one operation which is modulo with a prime number. So you usually do one thing, okay? Do a modulo with the prime number. So I'll do the exact same thing. I know that this value can go very large, so I'll do a modulo with a prime number. 
I know this value can go very large. I'll do a model with a prime number. I know this value can go very large. I'll do a model. So I know, okay. I know I have to put my base as 26. Half to a power so as to make the unique index. So I'll do a module just to be on the safe side that I always land onto my integer. But bro, you had a big value. You are reducing that value by doing a module. That's okay. But because of your modulo, still you can because see, it's a very large value. Okay, earlier you had a very large value, large value, large value, large and so on and so forth. So basically, earlier without modulo, every value would have been unique. It have been very large, but it, 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 it would have been unique. After doing the modulo, it is kind of you're bringing that value to a restrictive range like this. Okay, every value will, will become like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. But you have made all the values small by doing a modulo. There can be a chance after doing this modulo, you can still have your spurious, spurious hits. Which means you still might end up, might end up having same. Which means after, after doing this modulo, you still, again, that's going to be rare. But still, you might end up having this value same as some other mod value. Earlier, if I would have not done mod, it would have never had a spurious hits at all. But I know it's not possible to have a very large value. I have to do more for sure. So I will be having same. I can have same. That's a big thing. But yeah, you don't have to worry about it. Because again, that's a very rare case. Still, it can be a case, but it's a rare case. So we'll handle it later on. By, because, by, by, by learning something else. But no worries. Hold on. So, so far we have seen that we can do a simple sliding window to find the hash. But we saw sliding window by doing a simple hash for some values, which is simple numeric. But now my hash function have evolved a lot. Now earlier my hash function was A, B, C. But now my hash function is A with some radix. Again, this value is called as a radix. With some radix, its exponent which is index and then so on and so forth. Okay, now let's see how our hash function will look like. Again, we saw it will look like, like okay, character which is S of 0. S is the string index of 0. Then radix for us which is 26 which, which we have taken because we know it's we can take anything more than equal to 26 now now we have m minus 1 which means indexing and then so on and so forth we'll go okay next character radix is to our index and so on and so forth last character radix and its index and like considering we are we have the index from there itself again you can also go in from left with the index as this but then you have to modify it accordingly so now, this is the rough formula for a hash which should look like. So, let's see how we will make. Again, we will make the entire hash back for both string and pattern. So, we saw one thing that, bro, we have this pattern. Let's make a hash for it. So, hash will look something like, okay, if we have A multiplied by 26. We know that index is 0, 1, 2. So, 26 is raised power 2. Plus B multiplied by 26 is raised power 1. Plus Plus other character which is b multiplied by 26 raised to power 0. So now we have got this hash. Okay, great. Same way, same way, I will compute the hash for my string s main string. Again, for the starting m characters. And then I'll use my sliding window approach. For the initial m characters, again, m is this size, n is this size. So for initial m characters, I'll use and compute my hash. But then after, after onwards, I will use sliding window sliding window and so on and so forth. So for the initial hash, I'll just simply say a multiplied by 26 raised power 2 again, considering it is a 0, 1 and 2. So a multiplied by 26 raised power 2 plus c multiplied by 26 raised power 1 plus a again a multiplied by 26 raised power 0. Okay, we have done this fact. We have done this part. Now, now comes the factor that we have to compute the next hash. Again, although we will use a sliding window here itself, which means, which means what we will do? Again, first see how this hash, new hash will look like. The new hash will look like 26, sorry, c into 26 raised power 2. Again, considering it is a 0, 1, 2, like this. Then again, a into 26 raised power 1 plus b into 26 raised power 0. This is how our hashes is, are looking like. But my main task was I use a sliding window, which means I should actually use the existing hash and then I should be able to use and reach to my new hash, which is this hash. What operation I should do here so as to reach here? We know I'll simply add an I know I'll simply add a B and I'll subtract a A. But bro, you have to also make sure that you are actually maintaining this power also. 
So I had this hash. In this, C is having one power of one power of, of 26. I can see C is having 26 to the power whole two. So I know I have to multiply it by 26 in the entire thing because A also has 26 ish power 0, A has 26 ish power 1. So I know one thing, I have to multiply this entire existing hash with 26. That's fine. Okay, that's fine. But then I also realize that if I multiply that by 26, that's okay. So all this will be, all this will become a 2. Okay, this will become a 2, this will become a 1 and this will also become a 3. Then I have to subtract my A because I know I have to subtract my A, but subtract my A by what power? I have to multiply with 26 h power what? It has become a 3. Now, I, if you remembered, I had put an indexing 0, 1, 2. Indexing was 2, which means I had 3 elements. That's the reason indexing was 2 in the last. So I know it has become last index plus 1, which is nothing. But if it is 0, then it can go to m minus 1. So it become m minus 1 plus 1. So it became m. So I know I have to do a 26 h power m in that. Okay, this element is gone. But I have to add this element, which is last element, which is nothing but b. So I'll add a b. But again, add a b with what? b multiplied by 26 h power 0. So I multiply by 26 h power 0. So that's how from my existing hash, I'll multiply by 26, subtract my s of i. Again, considering, although, considering my i is here itself. Again, when I show you the code, my I will actually would have moved on. So my I would have been here. So I will be actually referencing with, with I minus one. But right now, again, that's a small change which you can go anyway here and there, here and there. So right now, considering my I is here itself, I'm trying for I plus one hash, which is the next hash. I'm just trying for right now itself. Then I will say, I'll take the existing hash, multiply that by 26. Then my existing index value, which is A right now, I multiply by 26 hash power M. Right, and then I will simply add up this new upcoming character, which is s of i plus m. If my i was here, then i plus m will be here. Remember in the code, remember in the code when I'll show you, my i will actually be here. Again, you can also keep your i here itself, but then so this index will be i plus m minus one. So keep it here and there, anything can go. It's just logic building, problem solving is more important. Now, coming on back, um, we will get a new hash. So this is how I can simply in O of one operation can compute a new hash. So that's again, uh, you can again repeat this exact same process to get a new hash for the new string onwards. Simple sliding window. So now we have seen that we will find the hash of the pattern that will look simply of how we would simply go and find the pattern hash. And the same way I can keep on finding my new hash. Remember, that's a hash. But make sure to do modulo at every step because a number it will end up becoming very large and you cannot store that large number. So please do the mod with a big prime number. We know the standard big prime number is 1 in 9 plus 7. Cool. And again, uh, I have told you that this number is called as a radix. And we will just doing again in the code set, you will see that this value will remain always constant because I am comparing the sliding window of size m. So this will always remain constant. So I will put it as a variable, which is called as a max weight for my code. And then in that I'll using, I'll be using this actual, I'll, I'll firstly compute this value because I know I have to compute this value with doing a mod itself. So this max weight will be 26 raised to power m mod with the mod value. Now mod value is 19 plus 7. Again, everything will be in mod. But it's just that I will show you explicitly that, okay, what things are actually being mod at that specific time. But yeah, everything will be mod every time, which means this will also be mod, this will be mod, this individual will be mod. So, so everything needs to be in the mod range, which means in the integer range. Now, and you know that you will simply can add s of i plus m multiplied by 26 to the power 0, which is nothing but 1 itself. So multiply by 1, it doesn't matter if you put it there or not. That's how you can simply keep on building your hash. Let's see the code again. That's simple string comparison code. So firstly, if you remember, you are given two tasks. Find if this needle is inside your haystack. Now, if your needle size, let's say your haystack size, again, haystack was a big array. Needle was a small array of size m, of size n. First basic thing is, if what if your m, which means the needle, needle string is itself way big, then for sure it's not possible to find your needle in the haystack. So this is needle. And this is haystack. Same. Okay. Needle. Needle. Haystack. That's how 
he stamp now um i can simply go and check okay bro it's still it's haystack now if your haystack is itself less than needle in fact bro it's not even possible to find needle in haystack simply return minus one here itself now let's go and start off firstly if you remember my radix will be nothing but nothing but 26 and then i have to find my max weight max weight if you have remembered is 26 raised to power m so i'll compute that max weight so that i can use that everywhere i don't have to compute again and again i'll simply compute this and we'll keep on using that so i'll simply know it is 26 multiplied by n times m times m m times so i'll simply say max weight multiplied by radix which is 26 for us as you can see m times it is being multiplied the loop of m here it is a loop of m and that's how i'll compute my max weight which is being a being by modulo itself now when this max weight is done now your next task was compare the hashes of your string m string of length m in your haystack versus your needle hash so you have to find the hash of needle so i will find the hash again this hash will be an integer value but to be on the safe side i always keep a long long with me although it will always be in an integer limit but still to be like maybe some way some value becomes a bit more and then it is being multiplied by something something so that to be on the safe side i always usually keep a long long and i also recommend in a contest and stuff please keep a long long so as to be like conservative that okay things are going right in your direction now coming on back that what we can do is that uh, you simply firstly find the hash value of our needle again i will say this is the needle string for me this is the radius which is which is which is right now 26 and the size of my string which is m length m and then i will find the hash needle again this hash needle is something about a hash function which will ask you for the string now if you had remembered let's say our string is needle so it will go 0 1 2 up till m minus 1 so again n into 26 raised to power m minus 1 plus e into 26 raised to power m minus 2 that's how the things will go as we saw above also so the exact same stuff that i will go backwards backwards which means okay my i is going backwards and then i'm simply computing my answer see string of i minus a multiply by the factor and then simply always remember to do a mod so this factor is initially a one so what will happen is i i know i have to make something like uh, d into 26 raised to the power 2 plus l into 26 raised to the power 1 plus e into 26 sorry e into 26 raised to the power 0 i know i have to make this so i know that in the very beginning i have to put a e and then 26 raised to the power 0 so i know in the beginning again i'm going off, i'm going in from the very end so i'm firstly getting a e itself and then saying okay e multiplied by factor factor is initially a one for me so i did a e multiplied by one again if you had remembered i had already told you that for my e the number is one two three four five but i'm taking number as number as four for e so i'll just say e minus a for example uh, see again a minus a will be a 0 b minus a will be a 1 c minus a will be a 2 uh, d minus a will be a 3 and e minus a e will be a 4 so that's the reason i will say simple one thing it can easily be said as 4 into 26 raised to power 0 which is 4 into 1 cool okay this is done then i will multiply my factor with the with the radix value which is 26 so as to the next value so i'll just say multiple l into 26 because i have multiplied my factor with 26 and then d into factor into radix value so i'll just say 26 square so this is this again factor was just one i'm keep on multiplying by radix and i'm trying to build my answer from back itself cool again because of this reason your a your a a's value will be nothing but earlier if i put a here so a minus a will be a zero so as in the code we will see that okay we are mapping a to a one then uh, b to a two but yeah here, here a will map to zero b will map to one and so on and so forth so because of this i'll just simply scan say this will actually how it will look like so i will have a, a let's say l is 12 right so it will be 11 d is 4 so it will be 3 and so on and so forth so e will be 4 into 26 raised to power m minus 2 and so on and so forth 
Swiss, but I am multiplying my factor with the new radix value, which is let's say R. And this is how I am actually building my factor and then building my this entire string. Okay. When this entire portion is done, you will see that you will actually be having your actual answer. Answer is nothing but your hash. Again, please make sure to do mod at any step whatsoever. Now you have got the hash value. That's a function which you have got. Okay. Simply now let's go on to the actual actual string s because now you have just got the hash of the needle but you have to find the occurrence in your main string s so go on to your actual main string because you know the length of the pattern is m so compare up till the n minus mth index okay in the very basic initial index you know you cannot do a window you cannot do a window movement in the very initial index you have to actually go on to the entire length m in your string of length n so I'll find the hash of haystack first time, only, only one time, only one time. First time I find the hash of my haystack. Again, the same function, it will give me the hash value of my haystack of length m and giving this as, a, give this as the radix value. Now you might ask, Aryan, this radix value is constant for us. We will take it 26. So why have you passed it as a function? No worries, you will see it later on. Why I have passed this as a function. But yeah, right now let's imagine that this is constant for us so now you have got the first hash value of haystack okay now as the index will move in now i simply use a sliding window as i said existing hash value multiplied by 26 and existing like go on to the index again if you had forgotten i had told you that if i am moving in my indexes so if you had forgotten if uh, where is this gone yeah if this is my current window so my i is here i minus 1 i have to remove and i plus m minus 1 i have to add in the existing window so exact same stuff i'll do i minus 1 index i have to remove and again removing i have to do a 26 raised to the power m and then i plus m minus 1 i have to add back so again multiplied by multiplied by 1 1 no worries don't write it at all this is this is i am subtracting which is this hash value i minus one and this is i am adding which is the new upcoming character and that's how i can simply get by using a sliding window the new hash of the window now when you have compared a specific when you have built the hashes no matter okay if you if you had used a sliding window or if you had computed for the very beginning time when the hashes have been computed now i told you there can be a chance that you can still have a spurious heads so you will still even if again if your hashes has become equal still i will go and actually compare both these strings still i'll i'll actually compare both these strings again i can simply write this as a simple if condition if my this substring is equal to the actual needle string but yeah i just told you that how you can actually see that again i am actually comparing the strings even if my hash is being matching i'll still come i'm still comparing my hash of that specific string of length m of my string pattern sorry of my string s which is the haystack with my string needle i'm still comparing that specific thing again if i cannot find something if i i say okay that characters are actually matching matching for us bro but if it is not bro huh, you have got the match you have got the match bro simply return simply return so i know that uh, if I have got, okay, both things are actually matching, simply return that specific index because that's the first occurrence of our match. But you will say, Aryan, we did so much of headache and now you are saying that it is exactly same as having a single simple hash function. What's the point? You wasted our 30 minutes. No, bro. This hash collision, which we saw here, it will be very less. But it's still, there's a high chance it can be there. No matter what, but still. Our time complexity will still be same, which is O of M into N. That's a pain, right? Yeah, I know. Uh, but can we do something? Yeah, we can. So what we can do? Again, people will not teach this, but the just small thing which you can do is do a double hashing. Exact same hash function which you used just do a double hashing. Because you know that you will do comparisons that will take again O of m n time o of n time again so that simple thing which you don't want so do one thing you have to minimize the chances of spurious you you know you know 
you know that you have made this hash function which actually is minimizing the chances of spurious hits but still there are, there are a lot of chances of your spurious hits being there so now you will do one thing what if what if i told you that there are chances of, spur of spurious hits by the above hash function for example earlier we took the mod as 1 plus 7 right for example for like for for sake we can take again that's a prime number which is a big prime number i took it as 1 plus 7 I can still take 19 plus 33. That's also a big prime number. Just after 19 plus 7, I can still take that. Okay. So let's say again, I'm just showing you an example. With the single hash, still you can have a hash collision. And that's a spurious, spurious hits. So what would have happened is if you had used the mod function like this, then if you had made the hash function of these two strings, just correct us. Their hash function by using this mod operation would have been would have been seen and you can easily see visibly they are not at all equal strings but Aryan, you used a mod function like this but you remembered we used a mod function of 29 plus 7 i'll say bro both the mod functions have the same identity how if i can show you i can show you an example of this why you think it's not possible to get an example of this also i can simply write a simple for loop it in multiple permutations and then can give you an answer I thought it's a waste of time. So even if both have the same identity, if this can collide, just this, this can also collide. So this example was for hash for for a mod of 29 plus 33, but still with a mod of 29 plus 7 also, it can collide. What's the solution of this? Solution is use two different hash functions. But Aryan, huh, what's the possibility? Like, what's the huh, what's the thing? Like, why I why I, I use it? Still, it will have collisions. No, bro. If you will use again, firstly, what it means by using two hash functions. If you remember earlier, we used a mod value of 29 plus 7 and the and and the radix value we used of 26. You remember that part. Now I'm saying you use two hash functions. So you can change the mod value to again 29 plus 33 and then a new radix value. Again, I told you radix value can be anything more than 25 which is 26, 27 and so on and so forth and we proved that also so I can take any radix value for simplicity for having a smaller value we took as 28 again we can take any value bigger value and again we have to take a next larger prime number which we take as 29 plus 33 so now I am saying I will compute a hash function by using this I will compute a hash function by using this and now my hash function of needle and haystack should match both with this also and this also and then only I can easily say that my hash functions are basically now then my strings are matching. But Aryan still, you can have spurious hits. How can you prove that it will not have, bro? Mathematically, again, I'll not go into the proof also, but mathematically it can be proven that if we use different mod and radix values, then we can reduce the chance, which is the probability of spurious hits by 10 ish power minus a 10. That's a very, 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 very low probability. Which means in the number of test cases which a person will write, he has to write so many test cases just for just for the probability of that spurious, spurious hit. Again, you can just again let's say let's 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 imagine that if even if you used this hash function, again, I'm I'm giving the worst possibility. Worst possibility. Okay, but it will it will it will, it will never happen. But still, worst possibility. If you use this hash this hash function, right? Which means you use both of the hash functions and then you're comparing both of them. As I'll show you later on. Still, if you saw, maybe in future, it's a it's a very highly un unlikely, but still. Very, very, very highly unlikely. But still, let's imagine if you still saw it. Just do one thing. Do just simple one thing. Change this 28. It will pass. Although, again, I'm saying it's a very low probability that it will even fail. 10 ish power minus 10. Can you just imagine that part? It's a very less probability. But still, just imagine the person was so into it that he had to make some example that it will fail. Then bro, do simple one thing. Do it at 28. Or in what if it still fails? Bro, do one thing. Take the next prime number. Person can never build all the test cases which can actually satisfy this. Bro, it will again. Or in what if it still fails? Bro, do one thing. Take a next prime number and make another hash. 28 and then another next higher prime number 
no matter his even grandfather cannot build something like that so but yeah that's a way too extreme for the folks who are actually about to fight me so for the, for them only i just told you a solution but still no matter what you can never reach to this superior set it is very very negligible so what's the change in this simple two two radix value two mod values so i will have radix value one as 26 mod value as 19 plus 7 radix value 2 as 27 and mod value as 29 plus 33 now hash function now instead of returning one hash i will return two hashes exact same thing will go on just both of them i will be computing now so again you will see fact i had only earlier factor one now just another factor factor two was also added so earlier i had only this computation of hash and factor hash one and factor one now i'll also compute hash two and factor two earlier i was only re re returning hash one now i'll return both hash one and hash two that's how i'll simply keep on going about it now simple is that same thing in the code also basic condition if what if needle size is more if it is less then you can go about it now you have to compute max weight earlier max weight was 26 ratio power m now max weight 2 will be 27 ratio power m so i have to compute both of them so i'll compute both of them but with their corresponding mod values make sure that part okay when this is done now you have got the hash of the needle as a pair both the hashes you have got then you will simply keep on going again exact same thing exact same thing now you are again it's just that earlier hash was simply a long long now it's a pair of long long so now you just simply again exact same stuff get the hash hey for the i equal to zero for the other hashes you just use the sliding window for the sliding window i'll compute the hash first the hash second again exact same stuff just using the radix one mod one radix two and the yeah, max weight two and stuff for the hash two use radix two max weight two mod two and so on and so forth when you have got hash one and ha like hash first and hash second compare both of them and both of them should be equal so hash hey first which means hash of haystack first which means the first hash and the first hash of needle should be same the second hash of needle and the second hash of haystack should be same both of them should be same only then i'll say that it is the matching one if it is not simply return so you saw the extra thing which i was comparing here it is gone by simply computing a second hash function and that's how my time complexity is now o of n plus m and not o of n into m and that's how you can simply solve it again you will never get spurious hits if even if you get it please simply update the radius value to 28 it will solve it still you get it firstly you will never get it but still if you move it to 29 if you are thinking oh i are in icpc world finals bro do one thing make another hash function and then compare all three hashes that's it cool bye bye i hope that you guys got the entire rabbit cup people were actually going mad about i had to bring it as a part of 100 days 100 placement challenge but it was way too much hectic for me so i had to bring it this video first we'll bring in the 100 days 100k later on cool bye bye thank you so much goodbye take care and thank you for watching